Talk basketball for a minute. We were at Michigan State's basketball practice yesterday, first practice of the year, and that looked like a Michigan State basketball team out there to me, Paul. They were playing hard, and there's some skill out there. Didn't have Jaden Akins, didn't have Malik Hall, but uh, I thought Sissoko looked a little bit better than I saw from him in the, in, the, in the summer. In the summer, I thought, man, and I posted about this, that I wasn't sure he was coming along very well, but... I, I put an asterisk on that. Every time I saw them in the summer at Moneyball, um, it, earlier in the day, Michigan State would have weightlifting sessions and practice. Then they'd go play Moneyball. Some guys can just kind of like marathon runner their way through it. But he, um, I wondered if he was, a, you know, a, a kind of a reduced version of himself when I saw it in the summer. Yesterday in practice, I liked the way he was moving laterally a lot. You're not going to ask him to be, you know, Kim Olajuwon with the offense or anything. But the first thing you have to do is move laterally to play ball screen defense, protect the paint area a little bit. And I think, I think Sissoko uh, is a little further along in the functionality, serviceability mode than, than, uh, than maybe I would have thought a couple months ago. I think he's on target to being use, useful there. Yeah, and they're coaching him hard. Doug Wojcik was coaching him really, really hard yesterday, and, and I, I like that. And, and I, think he is, I think he is making progress. One of the things that I noticed is, you know, you look at the bigs, and that was a two-hour practice that was high, high energy. Yes, it was. I mean, they are so demanding at Michigan State. And you could see uh, the bigs that had the energy at the end were Sissoko, and uh, and uh, Carson Cooper and you know I felt like Kohler and he isn't as good an athlete as either of those two I felt like he was flagging at the end where Sissoko had a couple two-handed rebounds where he went way high snatched that ball from from Kohler and, and that to me was impressive but the continuous uh, you know quick dunks the you know the quick leaping the the moving quickly the taking the taking coaching uh there was one time where he was on a breakaway i we can't give out too many details but I, this is just an example of where i think he was better he got stuck under the rim in a, in a, in a not advantageous um situation i thought he was going to brick the the ball he had like a little like touch layup where he, he went higher off the glass and it came down. Little things that we, you look at a kid that didn't has, has played so little basketball in his life. I, I see little things that, that you see from guys that have played basketball for a long time and you're starting to see those. Hands look like they're they're better. But the, um, the two-handed uh, grabs, the finishing in positions where he wasn't where he's not comfortable catching the ball uh you know the defensive awareness sometimes he has lapses but he's he's recovering quicker there's there's more suddenness to him there's now. more suddenness to him but he's also in a good basketball position you know like the detailed stuff that michigan state is so good at coaching you know you're going to be at someone's elbow up, up here uh you know in some of the ball screen stuff i i, I see him picking that up He's still making mistakes, but it's not foreign. It's not foreign to him, and uh, he does it with a high energy, a great attitude, and uh, and he feeds off his teammates, and they feed off of him, and uh, it, he's going to be that. I think he can be that glue guy that does like does dirty work, gets rebounds, uh, you know, gets hustle baskets. And Michigan State needs a dirty work guy, bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, and he's got uh, he's improved his musculature too he, a little bit without had, being without being muscle bound. Right, he still gets up quick, and the the the, the two handed rebounds way above the rim is something that Michigan State lacked. You know, Izzo was talking yesterday at the press conference about wanting to get. X amount more shots. Well, you can't get X amount more shots, and you can't shoot more three pointers unless you're getting off, unless you're getting clean defensive rebounds. That's one of the things I was watching in practice yesterday. And uh, granted, it's the first practice of the year. No one's no one's really fatigued, although they have had a good summer and they have worked out hard. But I, Sissoko to me is a guy that is doing a better job getting clean rebounds. I think Joey Hauser is another guy with his. Um, athletic improvement with his dropping weight. I think he's moving better, getting the spots spots better. Maybe not quite as strong as he would have, would be maybe in the post defense, but I think he'll rebound better and rebound cleaner. Um, you know, so I think there's some really good things that I saw yesterday. And, and Hauser's uh, dropped about 10 pounds. He's moving better. He is. He is. And, and the shots quicker. Uh, I think shots he's. Quicker. I think he's getting from point eight. You know, like the. He's always had great fundamentals, right? And uh, and I think you, everyone sees that. But sometimes things are slower than you want them to be because of the, like with an ankle injury or whatever. So those great fundamentals, they don't do as much as they they should do. But what I what I was seeing from him yesterday was like quick movements. Yes. Like on the perimeter, you know, you catch the ball here, you're moving here, and then you're then you're getting a little bit of space and shooting a three. And and those are things we never saw in games where unless he was unless he was getting the ball in a great position to shoot. Uh, with no one, you know, 
with a decent amount of distance. You weren't seeing that three go up. Yesterday, you could see like the high level skill, mm -hmm. the quickness with it, the confidence, and mm -hmm. he was goofing around and laughing and having a good time. He had a good practice. And, uh, and so when Joey Hauser feels good about himself, and the world is a good place, and his teammates rally around him, it's a really good thing. The other guy that looked immensely more comfortable to me within the structure of Michigan State's program is uh, Tyson Walker. I mean, just, uh, I forget who it was that had a weird, weird, janky-like looking post move, and Tyson Walker was mocking on him, you know, just like trying to, you know, like uh, show him what he did wrong. And he's out there having a good time laughing. He's talking more. Uh, he's more vocal. I think the whole team was pretty vocal yesterday in, in practice. But Tyson Walker shooting a lot more, uh, you know, off the in the situations that he would pass up mm -hmm. uh, last year. He feels comfortable doing it. Uh, you know, I thought he did a nice job getting the, you know, with him and Hogard because mm -hmm. Aikens is out there on the floor a lot together. Mm -hmm. um, those guys work well together. Mm -hmm. I think Tyson Walker does a really nice job getting the ball to Hogart and vice versa. Mm -hmm. They've got a good feel for those two. for each other. And, and I thought that was a fun thing to watch. Yeah, those two really last year only played together, only sparingly. Like at the end of the year, they they worked on that a little bit and had some success with it. I think it's Illinois some other times. This year, you'll see Hogard and Walker on the court a lot together. Of course, Hogard's the primary point, but Walker can take it over in an instant. He's got those point guard skills coming in from the wing, but it's also an excellent shooter. Those two can put pressure on their defense with their combination of skills, and they've known each other a long time. Um, Walker knows the system better now. He's a little stronger, and Hogard's lost some weight. He's a little quicker. Those two as a tandem have matured. You mentioned Moneyball a second ago, and I think Hogard looks to me, he looks like he's back in basketball shape where I saw a couple times at Moneyball, like – that I thought maybe he might have put put a little weight on or had a little bit bad weight. He looks better. I think Pierre Brooks looks better than a little bit better than uh, you know than he did when I saw him in Moneyball. And uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be kind of fun to watch. I think of like when you think of Walker and Hogard. I think it's like when Travis Trice, you know, when he was playing off ball. I, I think you can do some stuff. So the, what I wanted to say with that Hogard. Tyson Walker stuff is the only way that works and the only way that's really effective is if Ty Tyson Walker is looking for his shot mm -hmm. you know where he's in but there's some some spots on the floor that you, I just felt like yesterday that I know that Tyson Walker is not going to miss from you know like that the dribble pull up from the elbow he mm -hmm. looks fantastic at that uh, what you expect I think you're going to see a lot less of the you know the runner type crap where that gets you really that that's that's what I think Basketball players coming from a Horizon League or going, coming from a Colonial or something like that, where they struggle, where that that runner, those floaters, those things are fine. Uh, he looks a lot better going up straight. He looks a lot better like coming off of, of screens and being like in, in ready shooting position. He's not floating at all. He, his game is a lot tighter defensively too. I think he moves well in defense mm -hmm. and he gets up there. It reminded me of some of those UConn guards mm -hmm. that can get really close. With, Close to you without 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 fouling. I thought he did a nice job on that. Um, you know, I think he's at ease with himself, yeah. at ease with the program. And I think having guys like my, Mark Montgomery, Thomas Kelly around, mm -hmm. uh, I think Thomas Kelly is going to be good for those those point guards. And uh, I, I really liked what I saw from Michigan State. Are there holes on the team? Heck yeah, there are. Uh, you know, you need Malik Hall, you need Jaden Akins. But for the first day of practice, I, I felt like these guys they aren't as far behind maybe is uh as you might think because a lot of people think this is a rebuilding year uh but it gets real real fast with michigan state yeah. i mean you look at that that schedule and it's no joke this thing is it's brutal i yeah. mean it's going to be a grind to get to the ncaa tournament this year yeah I think. losses are going to pile up but i think michigan state could be playing top 20 basketball with a lot of losses i agree i so agree that's gonna it's gonna be interesting to see how that all, all how that all shakes out is though with the an insane schedule, like you said, like you like you said yesterday. Again this year, even more than usual in terms of the insanity of the schedule. And it was interesting how he said that um, you know the the carrier, the aircraft carrier game was uh, an opportunity. And if Michigan State didn't go ahead and say they're going to be in it, they were going to choose some other school. And is those like he had like owners? He wanted ownership. Yeah. Like that's a Michigan the, State the thing. Aircraft carrier we're playing is a Michigan it. State game. That's what Michigan State does. It's it's a brand. So he game. didn't want to say no and let let Gonzaga play somebody else. So that's that's gonna, probably going to be another loss for. Michigan. Michigan State. Right. And, you know what? And, uh, you know, the, 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 the PK-80 thing, it's nice to be in those elite tournaments, but, I mean, you're, it, it, you know, a lot of these other tournaments, you start off a tournament by playing, you know, St. Peter's or somebody in the first round. They're playing Alabama, who can shoot themselves into it or out of it at any time. But, 
um, you know, then the, the Champions Classic, there's going to be some losses added up. Yeah, and, and the big thing for Michigan Villanova, State. Villanova, like you said, it's supposed to be they were expected to get Butler at home for the Gavit games, right. but they did a little switch and ended up with Villanova. Right. Thank you very much. So, so the thing is, the thing is, yeah, you, Michigan State could be playing top 20 basketball by the end of the season. But what's the record? What be? you really, really hope for Michigan State's sake is that all those lumps don't add up, and there isn't, isn't so, is things aren't so negative in terms of perception about what this team is and how bad they are. That this, you know. It would be really sad that in maybe the arguably the year where Michigan State plays its toughest schedule under Tom Izzo, which is really saying a lot given the scheduling in the past, that that, that tough schedule ultimately would cost them an Ooh. NCAA tournament bid. And and that, you know. I don't think it will as long as they stay healthy. I, I agree with you, but that's a, that's a big if, big right? If. It, on a team with so few scholarship players, mm. um, you know. I'll say this one thing about Sissoko. I'll, I'll put it to you this way. He still is a magnet for fouls. You know, he's going for rebounds so often. He's programmed to go after rebounds. He's over the back a lot. And he's, a, he's going to be a useful enough and an important enough player on a team with not many other big men like him that, you know, he might not, he might not score a lot here, and that'll be garbage points, which is useful. But it's a deal where when he is in foul trouble, it's going to be like, oh, crap. Yeah, we can't we can't have that guy get in foul trouble. That's how important he's going to be. But he is going to get in foul trouble. Right. It, and then like, how is he losing that weight? You know, he's kind of scrapped and clawed and done what he could as a post defender here and there in emergency situations. Now he's ten pounds less. That part of his game, I think, is going to be decreased a little bit. His offense is going to increase. But on a team that's kind of has the donut situation defensively, especially if and when Sissoko's in foul trouble, it's going to be a lesser version of Hauser. So it's Hall to play some post defense. Carson Cooper, uh, that that part of it is the big uh, big question mark. Yeah, and I wonder too, like with Hauser, you know, he's he's a veteran guy now, physically mature. He has lost lost the weight, but I also wonder is if the quickness is going to be able to put him in a position, in a better position, where he's going to be able to get in a, the best possible defensive position for him in certain circumstances. I. They're going to need his offense this year. This is the you know they need to have their stretch for yeah. on a consistent basis. And, need to outscore you know, those like falls. Like Malik Hall's another guy that you know he should be able to. Uh, you know we've seen in the past where Michigan State has had those swing guys that end up being really good defenders. Um, you know, but you got to have pieces to go with it. The other area that I think you talk about Sissoko being in foul trouble is the screens. Uh, you know, like yeah. I, I think setting, setting offensive screens. Yeah, because that's those are the type of things where guys with inexperience, you're moving your feet when you don't have to. Yeah. You know, you got to get to a spot, you got to get to it fast, and and that's one of the things I like. I really like about Sissoko being on the on the on the primary team, and you have the two other young bigs on the on the scout team, or uh, you know, Sissoko's getting a lot of lot of reps, a lot of practice, and but setting screens. That's another area. A couple times where he had some pretty strong corrections from Wojcik about, hey man, you're getting this is a foul here. And uh, you know that is his. That's Wojcik's project is to get Sissoko ready to ready to play. And um, he has come a long ways from where he was last year. So credit to Wojcik. Credit to Sissoko for having the attitude, taking yeah. the the tough coaching, and uh, and doing it with a smile on his face. And going through two years where he wasn't getting much playing time and still working at it, but he's serviceable right now. It's gonna be fun to watch that team. They're gonna be working hard. And uh, Konadike's working hard. We got him out here, too. Anything else, Paul? No. That's a long VCAST. Appreciate everybody sticking with us. For Paul Konadike, Jim Comproni from East Lansing, Michigan, with the Spartans, you're watching the VCAST and SpartanMag.com.